today I've got 15 simple recipes that are gonna make you want an air fryer. And if you know someone that needs to see how cool air fryers are, they gotta see this video because these are not your typical air fryer foods. My name is Kathy and I empower air fryer owners to actually use their air fryer and save time and money. You ready to see these? Let's go. Several of the recipes I'm sharing with you today are found in my cookbook. You can get it at yummyairfryerecipes.com and you'll see that it's over 164 recipes with spiral binding and they have pictures too. And the first one I'm sharing is my all time favorite. It's on page 83 in my cookbook. It's hibachi chicken with yum yum sauce. This is what you're gonna need for two. Get yourself one chicken breast and the seasonings you're gonna need are garlic powder, pepper, ginger powder, soy sauce, avocado oil, and the veggies are mushrooms, zucchini, and onion. Of course, you can substitute anything that you love. And honestly, this recipe comes together so quickly. Your zucchini, you're gonna cut into bite-sized pieces. And the onion you can cut into strips or quarters. Drop those in a medium sized bowl and then grab your mushrooms and quarter those up. Throw those in your bowl and then it's time to prep your chicken. All you need to do is cut these up into bite sized pieces. Just be mindful that you don't do them too small otherwise the chicken's gonna get overcooked and the vegetables will be undercooked. Now with all of this in your bowl you're gonna add in the seasonings. It's about a tablespoon of avocado oil that's gonna coat everything and then two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce and then throw in a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper, and a half tablespoon of garlic powder. And then just all stir it all together making sure everything is nicely coated. Time to grab that air fryer. You don't need to worry about preheating it. Just throw all of the veggies and the chicken inside and spread it out into a nice even layer. Then go ahead and crank up the air fryer to 380 degrees and you're going to run it for 12 minutes. If you have an air fryer that's going to remind you to shake, make sure that is set because we do want to stir up that food about halfway through cooking. And while it's cooking, we are gonna make up the yum yum sauce. And I tell you what, they don't call it yum yum sauce for no reason. It's yummy. So grab a small bowl and then throw in a half cup of mayonnaise, just a half teaspoon of ketchup, add in about two tablespoons of water, a half tablespoon of melted butter, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of sugar, and an eighth of a teaspoon of paprika or just a pinch. Mix that together and it'll be the perfect sauce consistency. And now here we are at the half Halfway point, go ahead and open up your air fryer, stir the food around, close that up, let it finish cooking, and boom, here comes the flavor. Oh my goodness. And I always like to check that internal temperature just to make sure everything's cooking on par and yep, it's looking good. Now, if you want, you can serve this on top of rice or alone. Either way will work great. This tastes disgusting. <laughs> just kidding. Mmm. <laughs> That sauce is good. so good. And this is what I tell people to make. Like when I meet them and they've gotten the cookbook, I'm like, oh, you've got to try the recipe on page, oh, I think it's 83. Yes, I was right. Page 83. It's so good. It's so good. It's a keeper. Mm-hmm. A million stars. Sweet and spicy pork chops coming your way. First, you're gonna make the rub. Get three tablespoons of brown sugar, a half tablespoon of paprika, a half teaspoon of black pepper, half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of chili powder, half teaspoon of garlic powder, half teaspoon of onion powder, and yep, half teaspoon of cayenne. Add more or less depending on your heat tolerance. Mix it all together, then set that aside, and it's time to prepare your pork chops. Now, unfortunately, these are some thinner pork chops that I have today. I do recommend going thicker, but pat them dry, and then you're just gonna cover the pork chops with the seasonings and rub it all in. Then place them in your air fryer. Lightly mist it with oil. And because these pork chops are pretty darn thin, it's not gonna need as much time. We're gonna cook them at 380 for five minutes, and then we'll check on them. And these pork chops, well, they're super close. We will flip them. Close it up and give them about two more minutes at 400. And now these are perfect. What you think, little boy? I'd say, I'd say five out of five. Very nice. Even the pickiest seafood eaters are going to love these salmon bites. First, you're gonna make a marinade. Put in a tablespoon of toasted sesame seed oil, two tablespoons of soy sauce, a tablespoon of honey, two teaspoons of sriracha or chili garlic sauce, 
and then mix up the marinade in the bag. And next, you're gonna prep the salmon. Go ahead and pat it dry, and then you're just gonna cube it in even size cubes. Now, it's totally up to you if you wanna take off the skin or not. I found that it was pretty easy to separate it from the salmon as I was cutting. Go ahead and drop your salmon in the bag, shake it around to coat, and then you can pop it in the fridge to marinate. Now that it's had its 30 minute marinade, we're gonna air fry it. I'm just gonna drop all of that right inside the basket. Then just spread it out in an even layer. Pop it in the air fryer. We're gonna air fry it at 380 for about six minutes. Here we are, just minutes later. And these look perfect. Mm-mm. Good salmon. What do you think? I'd say a three out of five. I've had better salmon, but it's very nice tender. It's got a nice taste, not spicy. No, I'll, I'll give it a four. Four out of five. I'm a huge salmon cook. So if this gets five out of five, it's very impressive. It looks good. They all look good, but. Wow, that doesn't even taste like salmon. What does it taste like? I don't know, I am allergic to it though, but it's very like soft. That is very soft salmon. It's like marshmallow salmon or something. Bussin, I give it a probably three and a half out of five. So good though. I'm just allergic to it. Okay, I have a secret for you. You're gonna wanna make this little finger food appetizer, whatever it is, and bring it to any gathering and you will be the star of the show. This is bacon wrapped pineapple. It's easy and amazing. First, go ahead and just prep your pineapple. If you've never done this before, I find it's easiest to go ahead and cut off the outer shell and then cube your pineapple. Just cut it up into bite-sized cubes and you can do as much or as little as you want. And now it's time for the bacon. Go ahead and cut those in half and set it aside. And then lastly, you're gonna need a plate of brown sugar. Go ahead and drop the pineapple right in the brown sugar. And of course that's optional. And then you just grab a half a piece of bacon, wrap it around the pineapple, poke it with a toothpick, and set it on some parchment paper. And now we're gonna air fry these babies at 400 for 10 minutes. Now I did not rotate these during this 10 minutes. I decided I wanna crisp it up just a little bit more. So I'm taking out the parchment paper, but don't worry, my air fryer is still gonna be pretty darn clean. Flip these around and give it about two more minutes at 400. And just wait until you see how these turn out. These are like my favorite treat. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. One of my favorite things to use the air fryer for is my protein base, and I use it for lots of different things. In this case, we're making some chicken tacos, and I have a delicious avocado crema sauce that goes with it. First, you're gonna need some chicken thighs. Now, don't be grossed out about these chicken thighs. You could use chicken breast if that's what you prefer. You'll need some limes, some chili powder, smoked paprika or regular paprika, minced garlic, coarse kosher salt, and optional, some red pepper flakes. First, you'll just need a half a teaspoon of the zest from the one lime, one tablespoon of avocado oil, and then a tablespoon of lime juice from your lime, a half teaspoon of chili powder, a half teaspoon of smoked or sweet paprika, and then mix all of that up and drop in your chicken thighs. And now we're gonna make the avocado crema. I think I'm saying that right. For that, you just need a half cup of sour cream, one large ripe avocado, one and a half tablespoons of lime juice, and a quarter teaspoon of salt, and then just a dash of black pepper to taste. Go ahead and mix all of that up, and I promise you will be so happy you did. Pop them in the air fryer, and then we're cooking it at 400, for 10 minutes. I know. It smells amazing and it looks amazing. Cooked to perfection. And now we chop. And now the teenage boy can make his taco. Add the cream sauce on the shell and any other toppings you might have. I am just out of them all. This looks very good. Then oh throw God. some Ooh. chicken on and time to enjoy. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. It's amazing. Wow, mmm, five out of five. Oh Definitely. yeah. It's just a beautiful mix of flavors. This balsamic pork tenderloin recipe is also in my cookbook, page 120. And I love the fact that this cuts the regular oven cook time in half when we do it in the air fryer. For this recipe, you will need, of course, some pork tenderloin. Note that pork tenderloin is different than a pork loin. You'll usually find 
two tenderloins in one package. And then there's just nine other seasonings that you need for this marinade. Start with three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of soy sauce, a teaspoon of lemon juice, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one and a half teaspoons of pepper, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and a teaspoon of rosemary, and a half teaspoon of onion powder, half teaspoon of garlic powder. Now, I personally like to throw the marinade in a bag, and I use these handy stands to help keep everything together. That way, there's one less dirty dish. Then you can just get both of those pork tenderloins and put them in this bag. You could freeze one for later or cook them both up tonight. Go ahead and seal up the bag and then move it around just to coat everything. Let the air out and then you're gonna let this marinate for at least 30 minutes. The most you'll wanna do is like overnight. Oh, yay, thanks Haley. Oh, you're welcome, thanks. Turn around and thumbs up. When it's done marinating, we're gonna pop it in the air fryer. I'm gonna use some parchment paper to keep that nice and clean. And then just place it right inside the basket. If you have any skinny sides, tuck them in. You could freeze the second one for another night or cook it at the exact same time. Pop in the air fryer, crank it up to 400 for 10 minutes and we'll check on it. And ooh, look how beautiful. We want to get this up to 145 degrees. So it's super close. So that brown sugar is helping it char. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this. Then we'll finish it up and we're gonna give it about three more minutes. And now it's the moment of truth. Now it's about 141, almost 142. And now we're just gonna let it rest here. It'll finish coming up to temp without overcooking and it'll be perfectly juicy. Ooh, it's nice and soft. Um, I like that flavor. I'm gonna do a five out of five. I think you're gonna love this amazing veggie bake. Now you could do any type of veggies that you want today. I'm using eggplant, a pepper, zucchini, broccoli, and a red onion. All you need to do is pick out what you wanna make and then cut it up into bite-sized pieces. Then spray your air fryer basket with some avocado oil and load it up with all of your cut up veggies. Then spray the veggies again to coat and stir them around. It's just very important that everything is evenly coated with your avocado oil. Another option would be to put all of your veggies in a bowl and then pour on some oil and stir it up. But I didn't want to get another dish dirty, so I'm just doing it right in the air fryer basket. Now you're going to put this in the air fryer at 380 for 10 minutes. And while that's cooking, I've got a super yummy cheese topping for you to make. In a new bowl, get a half cup of grated Parmesan cheese, a quarter cup of breadcrumbs, and then your choice of seasonings. You could do Italian seasoning or something called Herb, Herb de Provence, I think I'm saying it right. And you're just gonna add in whatever you want. It's kind of one of those to taste type things. You can see I'm being pretty generous with the amount I'm adding. It might've been like a tablespoon. Then stir that up and set it aside. And you got one more dish to pull out to make an amazing sauce. You just need one cup of canned tomatoes with chunks or crushed tomatoes, something that has some good texture to it. And then throw in a little salt and pepper to taste and either some fresh basil or ground basil to taste. Now the veggies are almost cooked, but we're going to finish them off by sprinkling that dry cheese and breadcrumb mixture right over the top. And then take that tomato sauce mixture and spoon that right over the top. And then lastly, sprinkle on some mozzarella cheese to taste. And then you're going to throw it back in the air fryer at 380 for about two to three minutes and check out this beautiful veggie bake. Oh my goodness. What is this mom? It's Vegetable amazingness. Pizza. It's essentially a veggie crustless pizza. Okay. Veggie bake. Ready? <laughs> what the heck? Wait, that is... That's amazing that right is there that is what that is. <laughs> oh, that was for me. <laughs> you want to try it? Everyone thinks Olivia only likes sugar, so do you want to prove them wrong? Ah. Um. Mm. <laughs> I don't even like, I don't even know what I'm tasting, but it's good. Mm-hmm. How many stars do we give this? This is, this is 5.0. This is amazing. I, I would give it a five. But? It's, the, okay, it's definitely a 4.5. It's not a five for me. Because it's vegetables? No, because my throat was itchy for some reason. Oh. <laughs> So if I throw it, it should be a five, but. Look this much, a half. 
Mm. Just a little half. A point five. Um. This one is a variation of the molten lava cakes that I have in my cookbook on page 217. Remember, you can snag it at yummyairfryrecipes.com and we're gonna make peppermint lava cakes. And you just need a typical array of yummy baking ingredients oh, plus some peppermint extract and candy canes. But start with four ounces of baking chocolate. Go for the 60% cacao. I promise you it's worth it. Don't do chocolate chips. Get that baking chocolate instead. Then add in five tablespoons of unsalted butter and then you need to melt it. And I apologize, I lost the footage for melting it in the microwave. But if you just do the first minute and stir it and then do it in 30 second increments, you're gonna have nice smooth chocolate. Now, once that's stirred up and it's nice and smooth, you're gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of salt, three quarter cups of powdered sugar, a quarter cup of flour, give that a nice stir, and then you need two large eggs plus one egg yolk, pour that in and stir, and then lastly, drop in a half teaspoon of peppermint extract. Now, it'll take a little muscling to get that nice and smooth, but I promise it'll work. Then grab four ramekins and divide the batter evenly among these four ramekins. These are eight ounce ramekins, and by the way, I link to all of the tools that I've used in this video down in the video description box below. Now we're gonna air fry these at 400 for eight minutes. Today I'm using the Kasori Turbo Blaze and on this one I use the bake setting which actually reduces the speed of the fan but if you don't have that setting it's okay. Air fry at 400 for eight minutes and it's gonna have a nice gooey center but you can do it longer if you want it cooked through a little bit more. But at my house we love the gooey center. After it's cooled just a little bit use a knife along the edges to loosen up the cake from the sides. And then this is the easy way to get these molten lava cakes out of the dish. Set a plate right on top of the ramekin and then you just flip it over, use the hot pad to lift the dish out and boom, there's your nice gorgeous peppermint lava cake. Oh my goodness, check this out. <laughs> I shall feed you. Oh, sorry, is it hot? <laughs> A little hot. I'll do that again. <laughs> Ooh, it's warm. It's a lot of chocolate all at once. She doesn't like brownies. I don't love brownies, but I this love is, peppermint. This is lava cake. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of chocolate, like, this is really good. <laughs> but I love the peppermint. It's a five. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You can buy these and cook them in the air fryer. That's totally fine, but it's a lot healthier to make them on your own. It's a bean and cheese burrito. So we're gonna just heat up these refried beans and they are an excellent source of fiber and protein. We want them to be a little bit smoother, a little bit more runny consistency so they spread easily. So that's why I'm warming them up and you can throw a little water or since I have some chicken broth, I'm gonna use that. Just stir it up to heat it up and get everything blended nice and smooth. And if you have spices on hand, you can just add these if you want to. I'm doing a quarter teaspoon of each. Garlic powder, cumin, chili powder, some oregano, and I'm gonna throw in a little dash of salt. And we're gonna just lightly spray the basket. And I'm gonna shred up half of this brick of cheese. It should make about two cups. And then set out your tortillas and go ahead and put some beans on each one. Throw in a little enchilada sauce and then just load in the cheese, yum yum. Now you'll see I've got a ton of room here. That's because we are gonna fold in and then roll them up. Very nice. Then just give them another light mist over the top. Pop it in the air fryer, and then you're gonna run these at 350 for about anywhere from four to six minutes. So if you want it more crunchy and more toasty, one tip is to oil it a little bit more. Then you can crank it up to 400 and run it for like one or two more minutes. And there we go, delicious. Here comes a delicious bean and cheese burrito. Mm. I give that a four to five. I don't even like bean and cheese burritos, but this one was pretty good. Yay! Five out of five. Air fryers are awesome for roasting vegetables. You're gonna love these roasted sweet potatoes. And for the ingredients, you need, of course, sweet potatoes, some salt and pepper and oil, 
and we're gonna make them a little extra fancy with some maple syrup, dried rosemary, and cinnamon. Oh yes, it's amazing. First, peel your sweet potatoes and then just chop them up into even bite-sized pieces. And throw them together in a bowl, and then in a separate small bowl, add in a half tablespoon of oil with one tablespoon of real maple syrup. Then add in one teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. So stir your seasonings, and then you're gonna pour those right over your sweet potatoes and mix everything up together. And then drop that in your air fryer basket. If you want these extra roasted, you could always mist it with a little bit more oil. We're gonna air fry these at 360 degrees for 10 minutes. Be sure to stir them at the halfway point. And at this point, we're gonna just sprinkle on some rosemary, however much or little you would like. Let it finish cooking for that last five minutes. And these are gonna be so perfect. And remember, you could always add more time if you want them more charred or roasty, whatever. Oh yes, roasted sweet potatoes. Mmm. It's like dessert to me. That is very true. Mm -hmm. I don't seasonings on that, but it actually like that is well worth. Thought I would hate. That is good. Potatoes. That's well worth what? My time. Your time in eating yeah. it, Neely. <laughs> Yes. This is so good. You're gonna love it. Do you love it? Probably like four. You go to four? I get five. You go to five. Mm. Enjoy this one. Now, I know we were just talking about bacon, and you're probably wondering, what about just bacon? And this is how you do bacon in the air fryer. Now, personally, I like to use a little foil on the bottom underneath the basket. That's gonna catch all the grease, and it makes cleanup so much easier. Some people have air fryers that tend to smoke a bit when they're cooking greasy foods. If that's you, then just get a little piece of bread, rip it in half, put it underneath the basket. That's gonna help catch all those grease drippings and make it so your air fryer does not smoke. Then you can go ahead and lay the bacon down side by side in the air fryer, but if you're a lazy cook kind of like me, you can just throw the whole slab right inside the air fryer basket. I like to cook bacon at 380 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius for about eight to 10 minutes. In most air fryers, you might need to rotate your bacon halfway through cooking. If you're doing a big blob like me, then you just use your tongs, separate it out a little bit, and then let it finish cooking. Depending on how crispy you like your bacon, it's gonna take anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. Then you just let that grease cool down just a smidge. You can lift the foil out and throw it away. Or if you didn't use foil, just wipe up all that grease with paper towel and then soak your pan in some hot soapy water. It's so easy and so darn good. Now you can even make desserts in the air fryer and you're gonna love these maple bars. Up first, you're gonna need some Grand's biscuits. Now you're gonna stretch out this little biscuit to make like a little oblong shape. You just want them to look like a, well, like a maple bar. For the maple glaze, you need a quarter cup of butter, one half cup of brown sugar, and three tablespoons of milk. Get it on the stove and set your temperature to medium. And you just want to whisk up all of those ingredients, stirring often so that butter melts and everything combines. And now that this is almost done, I'm gonna preheat my air fryer at 350 for about four minutes. Once it's all melted and combined, take it off the heat and add in a tablespoon of corn syrup and two teaspoons of maple extract. That smells amazing. Now just to give it a nice donuty finish, I'm gonna just lightly mist and then placing oil side down in the air fryer. Then I'm gonna just give it a light mist on the other side. I'm gonna pop these in. We're gonna run it at 350 for just five minutes. Now I'm gonna add in two cups of powdered sugar, but I'm just gonna do a half cup at a time. You just want to make sure it's nice and smooth in between those additions. At first, you're going to be a little worried because it's going to seem lumpy, but don't worry because by the time you get to that last half cup, it's going to be nice and thick. Now, if your donuts are still cooking, you do want to kind of keep this warm. So just put it on some low heat. That's going to keep it from hardening up. And if it's just like way too thick, you can add in another tablespoon or two of milk. Time is up. Wow, look what happens in just five minutes. Then once they've cooled enough where you can just touch them but they're still warm, just grab your little maple bar, dip it right there in the frosting. Oh, yummy. Make sure everything's covered and just set it out so that glaze can harden. Taste test. Mmm. <laughs> Someone's God excited. Goodness. No way. 
The frosting melts in your mouth like a lot. So it's really good. Mm. Plus you can make these in 15 minutes or less. I'm making this all the time. You're going to? Guess what? You can make it in 15 minutes or less. That one was the best. So the best? Mm. New favorite. That tastes exactly like a maple donut. Do you know how much those cost? Normally? Like, if you went and bought that at the donut store, how much would that cost? Any idea? How much? Almost. I think three bucks. Almost. What? Five stars for me. How many stars? No, seven out of five. Five stars for everyone. Ding, ding, ding. Now I'm going to show you how you could totally up-level your hamburger and fry experience in the air fryer. And can I share one super cool tool that's super helpful? I created some cheat sheet magnets, and on these magnets, I tell you how much time and what temperature to cook foods at. So like this list is a whole bunch of frozen foods, and then over here is all the fresh types of foods and even baked goods. The super cool thing is because I have a huge YouTube audience, I surveyed them and said, what do you wanna see on your cheat sheet? So these are the most popular foods handpicked by my viewers. And if we look here on the frozen one, we can see that a hamburger patty cooks at 370 for about 15 to 17 minutes. And we can see right above that, frozen french fries go at 400 for about 12 to 15 minutes. So we're gonna cook them both at the same time. So open up your air fryer. You can see there's plenty of room in this 5.8 quart air fryer for this one third pound frozen patty and a good serving of fries. Just gonna pop those in there, kind of surround the patty. And now they're gonna cook at the same time. I'm gonna just set this to 380 degrees and I'll run it for about 15 minutes and then we'll check on it from there. And yes, you totally just heard me right. Homemade burgers and fries in 15 minutes. And when it's about halfway through cooking, you wanna go ahead and open it up, check it out. I'm just gonna move those fries around a little bit. And then go ahead and flip that burger and pop it back in and let it finish up. And now it's done. And guess what? We have one more tiny, tiny step. First of all, look at that. And then if you want to, I always advise double checking that it's cooked all the way through, which it totally is. But now for the last step, I'm gonna put a piece of cheese on top. I'm gonna set it right back in here. And then I'm gonna just let it sit and that cheese is gonna melt. That's gonna be perfect. And oh my goodness, check out how perfect this is. Can I give you one more cool tip? I'm gonna just set my fries and my burger on a plate here. Do you like toasted buns? Because if you do, this is so cool. Check it out. Pop your buns right here in the air fryer basket. Give it a quick little mist of oil using your handy dandy oil sprayer. Pop this right in the air fryer. And then I just crank it up to 380 for three minutes and it's gonna be perfect. And now, Oh, perfectly toasted bunsies. Yes. And now, even though there's hardly anything on this burger, it's amazing. Easy enough a teenager can do it. Yes. Oh, crunch. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. What do you give it? I would give it, for an air fryer burger, I'd give it five out of five. Nice. Perfectly cooked. Might want a little more red, but still good. Oh, slightly overcooked for you? For me. Thanks, Mom. Add some fries. Boom. Say thanks for teaching me how to cook, Mommy. Thanks for teaching me how to cook, Mom. These turkey meatball subs are on page 167 in my cookbook. These are one of the family favorites. And make sure you watch to the end because not only do we make the meatballs in there, we toast up the sandwiches as well. So we'll start with a pound of meat. So I'm using ground beef today. And then throw in a half cup of lightly processed oatmeal. One egg. Here are the spices that I'm adding. I've got a half teaspoon of salt, onion powder, Italian seasoning, one garlic clove, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then just go ahead and, yes, I use my gloves to just mix it all up with my hands. If you want a little kick, you can throw in a pinch of red pepper flakes. Then I like to use my little cookie scoop because it makes them just like perfect and uniform in size. And then I can just plop them right into the air fryer basket. Now I've got all of those plus, oh boy, just three extras. Then you're gonna take some thinly sliced peppers and just kind of lay them all around the meatballs. It's about one pepper total. I'm just doing a little bit of each because I love the color. Then just save all the extras in a dish for snacking. Then throw in about a half of an onion and you'll want that thinly sliced too. And then I'm gonna use some of my avocado oil in my little sprayer here and just spray those veggies up. And I'm gonna give these a little salt. 
then we'll pop it in the air fryer and we're gonna cook it at 350 for 10 minutes. Oh, and uh, if you want, you could do mushroom halves as well. I just totally forgot to put those in, but it's just me and my husband that like these anyways. So I'll just cook a few of these separate for us. Then while that's cooking, just make your little station. I'm gonna put some marinara sauce in a bowl so the kids can make up their own sandwiches. Got some provolone cheese. And I sent my daughter to the store and she got these delicious looking brioche sub sandwich rolls, so yum yum. And if you want to, you could toast your buns a little bit. We're gonna toast them when we have everything on there. But I like this part toasty too, just so the sauce doesn't make it too soggy. So I'm gonna just toast this for about three minutes at 350. Now when we're about halfway through cooking, you'll just wanna get some tongs, maybe roll your meatballs around, strip those veggies a little bit, just to make sure everything gets evenly cooked. Now in this dual blaze, I actually, probably don't need to do that because there's there's a burner on the bottom there. But with most air fryers, you wanna be sure and mix that halfway through. Oh, the buns are perfect. The meatballs look perfect. We'll do a quick temperature check with that instant read thermometer. And yes, these are done. Then it's the glorious part. You just load up your subs. I've got some really big sandos today. The kids can do whatever they want. They don't want those peppers and onions. More for me. Then just spoon on some sauce. And for the ultimate touch, transfer them back into your air fryer. Plop some cheese on top. We'll put that back in the air fryer. I'm running that at 380 for about two minutes. And now, oh, how glorious. Get in my belly. I'm gonna throw some fresh basil on. That smells amazing. Oh my goodness. We'll let it cool for just a second. Mm. Oh, here we go. It's not like spicy hot. Temperature hot. Yeah, like mm. fresh earlier. That is so good. Seriously ready in 30 minutes or less. The air fryer is also awesome to cook up side dishes. And look how we can do a baked potato in half the time. If you can get like even sized potatoes, all the better. But if not, it's okay. Give them a good scrub. Now in this instance, the air fryer does not cook potatoes faster. If you're gonna air fry them, you would wanna first dry them off. But I'm gonna do my little time saving trick. First, of course, pierce them with a fork. That's important to do no matter how you're baking them. I'm going to parboil these babies in the microwave first. Five minutes right there in the microwave. Potatoes have started to cook. We'll finish them in the air fryer. Okay, I'm preheating that air fryer and also just kind of drying it out. Um, these potatoes, the good thing about the microwave is that it also dries them for the most part, they are a little bit hot. They've been resting for a few minutes. Now that I have them fairly dried off, I'm gonna spray these potatoes with oil. Yes, ma'am, I sure am. You can either massage oil on it or flip them and spray both sides. This just makes, oh my goodness, the inside of the potatoes taste fantastic. Oh, I thought I hit a preheat button, but I guess I didn't. So here we go. I'm also gonna salt these up a little bit, just Seriously, if you have not done baked potatoes in the air fryer yet, just wait. Okay, so I could get like three smalls and three mediums in there. And I actually have the recipe for baked potatoes on page 131 in my cookbook. Normally we go like 40, 45 minutes, but since I did some pre-cooking already, I'm gonna go with 20 minutes. I've got the shake reminder. I don't need to preheat and we'll flip them. 10 minutes in. 20 minutes later, boom, those are hot and ready. You want an air fryer now? Check out my air fryer buying guide and reviews right here. And then these are the air fryer recipes you've got to try next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.